What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello, everybody. My name is Trevor Selescu, and I'm the owner of Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. Today, we will be looking at the 1972 Chevrolet Fleetside pickup truck by AMT Ertl. Now, this model truck kit comes from my own personal collection. However, round two might be re releasing it sometime in the future. And when they do, I want to make sure that you have already seen what's in the box first. But you can see all of our available model kits at www.monster hobbies.ca. I will leave a link in the description below. Now let's go down to our bench and see what's in the box. Now we return once again to our Chevrolet truck showroom where we get to take a look at the 1972 Chevrolet Fleetside pickup truck. This model kit came out in 1998 from the Ertl company. So this is prior to the whole round two thing. If we turn the box up on its side, we can see the cool yellow truck and the engine build as well as the wheels that we get in the kit and the interior. This is a skill level 2 kit for ages 10 and up requires glue and paint. Here's our yellow pickup truck right there. Really nice paint job on it. The rest of the box says it has a 350 cubic inch Chevy overhead valve V8, Cheyenne trim level and stock chrome wheels with detailed truck bed. And then we'll take the lid off our box here. So what's interesting with this is I actually have two complete instructions for it. I don't know quite what was going on there. Also got a little thing to the blue printer and a 50th anniversary card here. We've got our plastic in the bags. Wow, lots of tires in here. Some racing ones and some factory type ones. We also have our chrome. I had to use the front windshield, so I've only got the back glass here. There's a metal axle, and we have a decal sheet in here. Now it's interesting that AMT actually gave us two instruction sheets. What's nice about this though is that this one up here has the paint codes in it, and this one down here has the actual write-up for the truck. AMT has included a wonderful color chart listing all the colors and the corresponding letters that you'll find in each of the illustrations in here that tell you what color goes where. So what I'll do is I'll take a look at this one, but just for a brief moment. There's our write-up on our pickup truck. So maybe I'll uh, throw that into the description down below. But for now, let's take a look at this instruction set. Now our first two boxes show the basic sub-assembly for our Chevy 350 engine. Here we have our engine blocks going together with the cylinder heads, intake manifold, our carburetor, our distributor, and our ignition coil, as well as our starter motor. And over here we have our fans and pulleys, with one of these being the alternator, and the other I do believe would either be an air conditioner or the power steering pump. Our next panel is the second part of our engine going together. Here we have our oil pan. We also have our timing cover. And we do have a choice of valve covers. You either can use the custom ones or the stock valve covers. Panel four is our final engine assembly. Here's our belts and pulleys going on. Our fan goes onto there. Then we have our Siamese exhaust manifolds gluing on and our nice air cleaner dropping onto the top of our carburetor. Panel five and six show our wheel assemblies going together for both front and rear, as well as stock and custom. So here we have our stock wheel going into the Goodyear GT70-15 tires. We have a retainer pin and our wheel back. And on this side, we have our custom wire wheels going into our Goodyear Eagle VR50 tires. These are directional, so make sure you keep note of the tread pattern. There should be little arrows on the side of the tires saying which way it goes as for forward. Then our wheel retainer again and our wheel back. And the same for the rear wheels. Panel 7 shows our interior bucket with the pedals and the seats molded in place. The dashboard drops in and you have a choice of a stock or a custom steering wheel. Here's a nice painting guide that the larger instructions give you that the smaller ones don't. This is our dashboard right here, and here we have our gauge panel being semi-gloss black. 
the needles are red, the characters, which would be the numbers, are white, your trim is silver, and the dash is the color of the cab. Panel 8 shows our cab going together. We have the cab itself, the glass, we have a choice of either the stock grill and bumper arrangement, or the custom grill with headlights in the center here, as well as a rolled pan up front. We have our bow tie emblem gluing onto the front grill, our radiator dropping in place, our heater housing, the windshield washer bottle, master cylinder for our brakes, and the gas cap. Our next panel shows the optional lights gluing onto the top of our roof. We have our side mirrors left and right, as well as our license plate bracket. One choice of your decals here, number one, two, or three. And then our assembled interior will just pop up into place. Okay, so there's our chassis pan, all is one piece. We have our transmission support and our front axle blocks. After our chassis is finished, we can drop the assembled engine right into our sub-assembled chassis. Following that, our wheels will go onto the pins in the front, and a metal axle will tie the two together in the back. This is very nice because you get your front bulkhead and the box sides as well as the box floor separate. And we'll see a tailgate as well. There's a rear bumper and license plate with either decals one, two, or three in it. And to carry on the truck box, we have a two-piece tailgate, as well as our tail lamps going in here. And it says, do not glue the hinges. So that means that this would be operational. And now we roll right into the final assembly. Here we have our cab being glued down to the chassis. There's a couple of location pins and whatnot for that to happen. We have a radiator hose going on to the top of the engine, as well as to our radiator. And then you can close that off with your hood. And we do get a tonneau cover, and our box will drop right in. And there are some little guides to lock it in place, just like some of the later AMT trucks. And that will complete our look at our Chevy Cheyenne pickup truck instruction sheet. Here we have the cab for our 1972 Chevrolet Cheyenne pickup. And as you can see, it is nicely detailed, considering this was molded back in the day. Battery is molded into the front fender aprons, as well as our radiator wall support here molded in place, same as at the front. It does have sort of the pins in there, much like a promotional car. The back end, though, does have hooks and holes underneath. You got the nice roof paneling in here as well as sun visors mold in place. However, there are some mold marks up here. Again, your number 16 hobby blade. Looking at the side trim, again, very nicely done. The side marker light is in there, as well as the emblem in here. And then you've got the nice chrome for your two-tone. Door handles are nice. Overall, it is nice considering the vintage and all of that. You get your grill in here, as well as your windshield wipers. Here we have all our gray plastic components with the exception of the cab, our valve covers, cylinder heads, our intake manifold, oil pan, belts. There's our components for the belts, the fan itself, the starter, the distributor, our coil, our uh, carburetor, front engine cover, and the license plates and the wheel backs. And again, you can see nice detailing in there. Here's our chassis. So there's all that molded on detail. Then we've got our engine components, the air cleaner. There's our heater motor and our front king pins there. The power steering, windshield washer, reservoir, cross brace. Look at the nice detailing on here. You can see all the rivet heads and all of that. There's some mold marks underneath, of course, which you have to get rid of with your number 16 hobby blade or some sandpaper just to smooth it off, make it look nice. There's a radiator right here. Looks nice, even has a texture in there. Our tonneau cover actually has the stretch marks, which is pretty accurate on there, and a nice little cloth texture. There's our hood. Our tailgate has Chevrolet stamped into it. Nice detail on the back panel. Again, on the back of the tailgate, you have all the little ribs as well as the three bolts. And then we've got our underhood detail with the padding in there. Then we've got our wheels and that radiator hose. 
Looking at our engine block, it's got an automatic transmission to it. There's our steering wheel there, and then our Siamese exhaust manifolds here. Then our interior, everything that basically molded in place, which is pretty basic and uh, accurate to the 70s style. And then we've got all that nice upholstery pattern on there, as well as door panels inside with the window cranks. There's our sides of our bed, which again look really nice. A lot of chrome detailing on here. You can put a two-tone in here, which is really nice. There's our front rolled pan as well. And then on the back, there is uh, grooves and whatnot for inside on the truck bed and for location. And finally, we've got our nice dashboard here. All that wonderful detail and the gauges and everything. You could put some wood paneling in here. Wood grain texture, which is again, very popular 1970s accessory. See the nice crisp detail on that grill. Very nicely done. Same with the grill in here. This will look really good with the black wash. There's our wheels. Again, another good component for the black wash effect. Don't forget to paint this flat black, otherwise you're going to see this big chrome thing up from the back underneath when you turn your model over. But overall, the chrome looks nice and crisp on here, and it should add a bit of beauty to your vehicle. Here we have the tires for our kit, and what we're looking at here are the Goodyear G7015s, which would be stock for the truck. And here's our custom wheels, which give us the Goodyear Eagle VR50s and VR40s. Now, these are the custom wheels, so you get two smaller ones for the front and two larger ones for the back. Like I was saying before, they are directional, so that means that our tread pattern here is going in one particular way. There are arrows on the side wall of the tire that show you which way it goes, and you're going to have to cut out this web with your knife. Check out the video I have on detailing your tires. Now on our stock ones, they are nice. We have the original tread going on there, as well as our raised letters, which say Goodyear, of course. We have a metal axle, which will connect the two rear wheels together. And here I wanted to include our decals, which are basically our license plates. Kentucky has 72 fleet side, basically, FLTSD. Here we have Cheyenne for Montana. And then we've got a Pennsylvania Tough Truck. And I do believe these license plates are a little bit small to what the actual license plate would be. So again, you can either choose to use these or find some from your parts box. And that completes our look at our 1972 Chevrolet Fleet Side pickup truck by AMT Ertl. And if you've built this model kit in the past, why not share it with us on our Facebook page? I'll leave the link in the description below. Well, I hope you enjoyed that unboxing video where I got to show you this amazing 1972 Chevrolet Cheyenne Fleetside pickup truck by AMT Ertl. Tune in next week when we open up the lid on another great model kit. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Hit that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you're the first to see it. And until next time, happy model building! Thank you all for your support over on Patreon. I'll leave the link for that in the description below as well. Again, if you want to share some great stuff with us, do it on our Facebook page. And until next time, everybody, happy model building!